the prayer and then we'll uh, we'll just get started okay um Father God, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we could spend in your presence, Father God. We um, Yes, Lord, your word declares that uh, you, the, the scriptures are, Lord, powerful, Lord, breathed by you, and, um, Lord, they're sufficient for uh, equipping, Lord, uh, a person, Lord, for the good works of Father God. And we thank you for the wisdom in your word, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom that is there in uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and, Lord, um, the, the wisdom that we can, um, Lord, uh, uh, put forth in our own lives and apply in our own lives, Father God. We thank you for the principles in your word, Father God. We thank you that, uh, Spirit of God, you just breathe life and uh, quicken it to us, Lord. And we thank you for opening our eyes to the uh, Lord immense riches that are there in your word, Father God. And uh, maybe never lose sight of that, Lord. Father, we thank you that it's all there for us to <clears throat> for us to walk in, for us to understand, for, for us to walk in. And uh, yes, Lord, we thank you for empowering us to uh, walk in that, Lord. And we give you all the praise and glory at this time, even as you've uh, given us this privilege to do it. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so today, uh, we'll continue with where we left off. Last class, we looked at um, personal planning, right? And uh, the last section that we looked at was uh, like uh, goal setting. And uh, one of the things uh, is that, uh, you know, we could have like short-term goals, we could have long-term goals. And also um, what we can call as life goals, okay? So these are big goals that... Um, that we as uh, people of God, we, we as, as a human being, as a person, that we are setting life goals, right? These are goals for life. And, um, and it's good that we have those because then we can uh, work towards it, okay? Now, it seems very, very uh, unspiritual, you know, when we hear some people say, okay, what are your goals? And, uh, you know, are you working towards your goals? And, you know, you need to have a plan in life and so on. But the fact is that for us as believers, um, we can involve, uh, you know, invite the Holy Spirit, invite God into this whole thing and uh, and then proceed to plan and, uh, and even pursue that plan. Right? So we involve God because God is infinite. In his wisdom, he is uh, omniscient, which means that he's all-knowing. He knows the end from the beginning. And he's more than willing to reveal his heart to us. Right? He's more than willing to uh, uh, you know, reveal his uh, plans. And he's more than willing to uh, help us. You know, In fact, James chapter 1 talks about how if a person is lacking wisdom, we can actually ask God and he will not hold back. But one thing that is required is that we need to you know, ask in faith. Okay, that's what we see, right? Um, let me just quickly read that verse before we start off. Um, so it says that uh, James chapter 1 and verse, um, verse 5, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally. <clears throat> so when we ask, he gives liberally, meaning wisdom is given generously, liberally. Right? Then... It says, and without reproach, meaning he's not going to look at you, look at us and say, hey, you don't even know this. And you're asking us such a silly doubt, you know, asking such a silly, he's not going to say that. It's without reproach. Okay. Uh, and it's, and it's wisdom that coming from him, right? So it's a good source. Um, and what does it say? And without reproach, and it will be given to him. So we lack wisdom, we lack the ability to make certain decisions based on the knowledge, experience, or the information that we have. We can ask God. Right? He gives to all liberally, without reproach, it will be given. But the only thing is, let him ask in faith. Verse 6, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the when for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, uh, so the importance of all the other things, right? We grow in faith, and faith is not a formula. Faith is a relationship that we journey with him. We walk in faith. So we're able to ask in faith. And what will enable us not to be double-minded is when we renew our mind to the truth of God's word. Okay, so uh, 
the natural man, the carnal man, the fleshly man has a way of thinking. But the spiritual man uh, thinks like God because we have the mind of Christ. Okay, so in every situation, I love the thoughts of God. Uh, and that's why, you know, we, we spend time reading the word. We spend time meditating uh, on the word of God. That is, uh, it's not just, it, it's going to make God, uh, you know, favorable to us or we are, we are pleasing God in some way or the other. He's already pleased, right? Uh, because uh, he died for us on the cross while we were yet sinners. He's, so, um, uh, so that's the thing. So we don't have to do anything to, you know, uh, win the favor of God. But we do it. We read the word. We allow the thoughts of God so that we can be single-minded about the purposes of God. Our thoughts are renewed, renovated, changed in line with scripture. Therefore, we can think in faith. We can act in faith. Okay. So, uh, so, we, so we see this important instruction uh, here. So um, in all our planning, in all our goal setting, like life goals, um, you know, I, I, we can go ahead in faith and do it and not be afraid. Right? Many times we, in our prayers also, you know, sometimes we hold back because we don't, we're not sure, hey, is it the will of God um, that I'm asking this? You know, we're not sure. Maybe it's something to do with healing. Maybe it's something to do with, uh, you know, we're not sure. When we're not sure, we cannot ask in faith. You know, we don't have the confidence. But here, the Lord says, ask that your joy may be full. Right? The Lord Jesus said, ask that your, is it you've not asked anything, ask that your joy may be full. So, and when we ask for wisdom, no, we have the scriptural backing for it. So wisdom, even when we plan, right? and it's, uh, it's something that we can do. When we make life plans, we ask in faith, we ask for wisdom, involve God in the process, and we can plan. Okay, so uh, so we don't have to be two minds about it. You know, when I'm planning, maybe there's, you know, some of you have had a doubt, okay, uh, is it a spiritual thing to plan? Is it a spiritual thing? Or, you know, am I being, uh, am I going against being led by the Spirit? Yeah, you can plan two ways. You know, we can plan according to the flesh, plan according to the Spirit, right? Uh, but we can, we who are, you know, who have known the Lord, who are spiritual, we can plan according to the spirit okay so life goals so the thing about life goals when we um, any goal uh, that we are setting it's good to review it from time to time it's good to go back to it and review it what does a review mean review means that you take another look okay it just means re and uh, view another look at it and when do you take another look at it after some time has passed, okay, you, you plan and say, okay, this year I want to do this, this and this, you know, these three things. So uh, we start with January, we are, January is over, February is over, March, you know, and that's a time to take another look, to review, right? go back and look at the plan and say, uh, you know, am I working anything towards it? Uh, am I accomplishing anything towards this? You know, because so many things happen, challenges and, and, and even the, you know, uh, you know, this year, like pandemic and all that. So it's it's good to go back and review those plans and say, okay, yes, uh, the environment has changed. Uh, there are, you know, these are limitations. So what adjustments do I need to make to the plan? Okay, I review and, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can review and make changes, you know, as also in life, right? Okay, so now let's, uh, let's move on to the next um, uh, chapter. Uh, about about certain skills. Okay, so we looked at uh, personal goal setting as a skill, and also uh, interpersonal communication skills. Chapter five: okay, interpersonal communication skills. Now, God has created us to be social beings in the sense uh, to be with people, to communicate with people, uh, and so on. So that is why you know He instituted. All these social structures, like um, we see, uh, uh, you know, marriage as a design by God. We see uh, family as, a, as something designed by God. We see church as something designed by God. And in fact, it's referred to as the body of Christ. And, um, and the parallel is that just like a physical body has members, we are also members in the body. So 
uh, each member is connected in some way or the other, right? So um, here we see that we are members, we are social beings, and we are, we are created to communicate. We are created to communicate with God. Uh, we are created to communicate with people. So uh, it's important to understand that, that this is how we are designed. Now, some of us might communicate more, some of us might communicate very less, but nevertheless, we are created to communicate. Okay. So what does it mean uh, to communicate? Okay. What is communication? I remember one uh, incident, you know, when I went for uh, uh, for doing my PG for uh, my post graduation, and which was a management course. So um, when I went for that, the the admission process was okay. You'll have a group discussion, then you'll have an interview, and of course uh, you had a written exam, group discussion, interview, right? So. You, those who clear the written exam will have to go for the group discussion and interview and then uh, and the selection process happens. So uh, in the group discussion, the thing is everybody wants to be heard, right? Uh, you want to be seen as person who is wise and, uh, and good things to say. So everybody's trying to power their way in and say the things that they they want to say, okay? Uh, so uh, everybody's taking, trying talking at the same time and and uh, and it's like at one point everybody's saying something nobody's listening <laughs> right and it's supposed to be a discussion right i don't know if some of you have um, you know uh, attended or been part of a group discussion where everybody is saying because the objective is hey, it's a selection process i better say something i want to be noticed i want to be heard and uh, and you know so everybody's screaming shouting and uh, and i'm sure you know if you've seen some of those uh, uh, tv news channels like um, like uh, you know uh, uh, which one is that uh, republic tv or uh, ndtv and some of those some of the things you know some of the uh, uh, programs uh, where there's a there's a group there's a panel and they are discussing some uh, you know whether some hot topic or some controversial things or just everyday politics we see that everybody's got a strong opinion. Everybody's uh, shouting and uh, saying things, and nobody is listening, right? Except we, you know, on this side of the tele, uh, uh, viewing that program, and we're trying to figure out what is everybody saying. Right? So communication. Uh, the question is: Is that communication? You know, making a lot of noise, always speaking. Um, is that communication? Well, the answer is no. Communication, you know, if you look at it, communication is a two-way process, which means that uh, it involves sending out information. Okay, it involves a medium or a, a method or a vehicle for sending that communication. Like, for example, now, you know, when I'm speaking, we are using this digital medium. We are doing this, uh, you know, online, and and I think it's something called a uh, voice over internet protocol voip voice over internet where you know you hear my voice and it's 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 the technology is such that it's it's transmitted to you and uh, it could be newspaper it could be social media whatever you know we there is a medium that is involved and there is a receiver okay there is a sender there is a receiver and uh, and communication is two way okay it's not the same as as a one-way thing, there are one-way, uh, you know, broadcasting kind of thing. Like, say, for example, a newspaper, it's it's one way, right? Unless you choose to write back to the newspaper, which uh, I don't know if happen if that happens, you know, um, uh, majority of the time it does not. Like maybe some people do that, but it's not. A, it's a one-way communication. It's a one-way um, transmission of information. So, but communication is two ways, is both ways. It involves speaking, it involves receiving that, it involves listening to that information, and also it involves responding to that information, which means that I, as a speaker, I speak something, the other person, you, you listen, and then you speak, and I also take time to listen to what you have to say. Okay, so that's communication. So there is sharing, in other words, of information and it becomes common okay to both of us so uh, it it is which means that we are communicating that information is now common to both of us right so 
it can be uh, you know uh, uh, if if we are um, if you are the recipient of the communication it means that we listen to the information that is being said and we uh, you know we understand and uh, reflect and check about it and discern it and then maybe if we are not understood we ask questions you know you see that's the whole communication process so it's it's an active process it involves all these elements in communication right so now to be effective in communication is very very important okay in all um in all of uh, you know different social settings you know you could be a working professional uh, in office you could be uh, uh you know you could be in college you could be studying something uh, or even you know basic things at home right when we say there's no communication that means that uh, you know something has happened there that home you know i'm sure that you have walked into some homes and maybe uh, you know some some homes you know you're doing a house visit you just go and everybody is very quiet okay the husband and wife have had a fight right and there's been drop silence you walk in you can even almost feel the tension right there's no word spoken there's no word nothing it's like it's quiet full tense right so um well uh, what what makes communication effective okay uh, what makes communication um, uh, a, a success Okay, so these are this is a skill that we can learn. This is a skill that we can develop, and it's good. It's a valuable skill. So we can communicate well to those who are listening, and uh, and then and we can uh, actually convey certain things. And you know, as people in ministry, you know, in the in uh, or preparing for ministry. what are we you know we we have been given a great message our life is of course needs to be a strong message but we've been given a message that is to communicate the gospel right that is to communicate the message of god we are called you know in other words um, scripture says that we are called to be ambassadors of christ ambassadors of christ you know an ambassador of a nation is a representative of the nation is a spokesperson for the nation Okay, for a for a particular country, and so uh, we have been called to be ambassadors um, uh, of Christ. We are called, uh, we are looked at as ambassadors of Christ. So we need to, you know, uh, improve on our skill or uh, upgrade our skill of communication, so that what we share is understood the way we share. okay and uh, we can communicate this all important message we can share uh, this we can present this life changing message in a clear manner okay and the truth of god's word not just the gospel but everything that is there in the word instruction for life the the deeper life the the gifts the everything that is there we can present it or communicate it share it well okay um so it's a very important skill to develop okay now to be a master in communication is going to be a process it's going to take some time but you know if we keep at it uh, we can certainly uh, develop a uh, our skill of communication you know uh, the thing is this that um, in all walks of life you know like we said you know whether it's an office whether you're applying for a job uh, whether you're applying for a you know a ministry position uh, and so on uh, yes there are certain jobs there are certain things that that require you to maybe uh let's say you know design certain things okay like uh, maybe you're a software programmer and you design some things maybe you're a you know you're a you're a artist you're a graphic designer you design something um you know so the importance is on that skill right to be able to design something but also you need to understand that even uh, you know as a software engineer who's just doing coding or you know or a designer uh the work will involve interacting with people right so it's it's never without people the work will involve you know interacting with people uh you know as a doctor a doctor talks to the patient asks the patient you know what is it how are you feeling um you know what is wrong trying to understand what the patient is saying try to understand the symptoms uh, so that doctor can actually make a decision okay this is the treatment 
okay this is the line of treatment or the medicines and everything what to do what not to do to communicate that again to the patient you know after having listening so um, so that the patient understands and then does what is required to get well okay so you see that any line of work there is a need for good communication and um, uh, in any line of work in and in, and in ministry definitely you know to be able to communicate so um so if we are at that level now all of us can you know improve right in this and maybe uh, no matter how we look at ourselves and maybe as great communicators or maybe there's always something that we can improve and if we are saying that you know i i don't know whenever i say something people <laughs> misunderstand me or, you know we can always improve on that communication it it takes some certain simple things to put in place and it made a it'll make a big change right so um so here's a skill that we can look at okay so um if it's in a in the quest in the case of a interview for example you know you're going for a job interview then again the communication in the job good communication you know many times people would you know interview you're meeting people you've read the resume and you're meeting people and you're asking them the questions you know and people ask the questions okay what did you do uh, when did you do this and um, to be able to share that um without of course you know we're all a little nervous you know when it's a job interview will i get selected will i get rejected uh, and so on will i will they ask me some question that i don't know you know all that is there but to be able to share about yourself right to be able to share clearly uh, to the point and also descriptively uh, well it it takes uh, it takes a certain amount of skill to do that okay for some of us maybe it comes naturally and uh, for some of us we need to learn okay but the good news is that we all of us can okay so all of us can be good communicators okay. all of us can be do and it it bears fruit okay in whatever line of work or ministry that we are in okay so communication also um, is important because you are able to discuss certain things with people discuss with the team maybe you're a leader and uh, you know maybe uh, you're called to pastor uh, you know a church or um, uh, maybe a, it's a youth group or whatever it is you know uh, god has got places you uh, over gives you oversight or spiritual oversight over over his people now there is a need for good communication to be able to uh, plan things to be able to work things out to be able to guide and so on so um so the thing is this it is important okay it is something not to be neglected uh it will take effort but it can be done okay it is possible it can be done okay so now let's look at uh, developing communication skills okay uh Uh, how can we develop communication skills and uh, we need to uh, give some thought to it and focus on it because if we don't develop it if our communication skills are poor uh, then it uh, it affects relationships okay that's the thing that's the key thing because communication is about people um it affects relationships doesn't get the job done at the end of the day or maybe uh people do it in a poor manner okay one of the factors you know it could be uh, a lot of other things also but then you know one of the factors it's that uh, it affects relationships it doesn't get the job done or uh, also you know in a in a like in a home setting in a family let's say husband and wife you know when the communication is bad or when the communication is poor then the relationship suffers you know there is misunderstanding there is conflict um there is no reconciliation there is offense bitterness and so on so everything we see that relationship breaks down because of bad poor or no communication you know that's the worst when there's no communication at all you know uh then the relationship does not happen it's basic wisdom right uh, there is no relationship if there is no communication okay um so let's look at um, you know developing communication skills okay um, because it can improve our lives it can improve our relationships and uh, it can give us that edge in the work that we are doing in the ministry that we are doing okay so um 
so communication involves a lot of things. Uh, so let's look at that one by one. Okay, first of all, let's look at verbal communication. Okay, so we're not looking at, uh, you know, written communication. We're not looking at, uh, you know, creative writing or, or stuff like that. But uh, we're just, you know, narrowed down and we're focusing on verbal communication. What does it mean? What does verbal mean? Okay, something that is spoken. Verbal. You know, uh, when you say somebody is verbose, that means that a oh, lot of words. Is, right? Verbal means something that is spoken. So when it comes to verbal communication, Okay, we're going to be focusing on that. What is it about and how do we get our message across? And um, we, are, we, are, we are, of course, talking about, uh, you know, what is spoken, right? Um, so one of the thing is, um, is the language itself, okay? Uh, knowing the language itself, you know, that's, uh, that is very, very important. You know, of course, if we don't know the language, then we can always learn the language or uh, we can always have an interpreter or a translator, but that is always a, you know, it's it's a longer process. Uh, uh, but that that can also be done. But the but the best thing is to, of course, learn the language, know the language uh, in which you are, you know, you are you have to communicate to get the work across. You know, to know the language and know to know it well. So the thing is to improve on it. Okay, to continue to improve on the language, knowing the language, um, and um, getting to know what are what is the usage, right? You, common usage. You know, um, I'm, I'm sure you have these books. You know, learn learn Hindi in 30 days, okay, or uh, learn a certain language in uh, you know in so many days, and and the way. Uh, these are some old books, you know, I still have, I think, uh, Learn Hindi and uh, some of these. But if you look at it, it's like a very, um, uh, what is the language? It's, it's a very bookish thing, you know. Um, it's it's very formal. It's uh, it's uh, it's different from the way we, we would actually speak and communicate, right? Um, and it follows some very rigid rules and, and so on. Um, and that's not really helpful, you know. People are not going to... People are going to actually make fun of you if you if you you know um, and you say um, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of how to say it, but uh, I guess uh, you know uh, my Hindi is bad, so um, so I, I just won't attempt it. Okay, but the thing is this, you know, you understand, right? If you if you learn a language that way, um, it's going to be difficult, like to to communicate. Of course, you can communicate, but it's it's not really effective. Okay. So verbal communication, if it needs to be, and if you learn the language, uh, you learn the language if it's how it's spoken, and uh, some of the idioms and phrases. Like for example, you know, you you need to, uh, we need to know, uh, you know, like how it is spoken in a certain place, right? Um, in a in a certain place, like for example, uh, you know, I um, I remember asking someone, okay, hey, uh, how was your exam? And uh, this person answered, it was cool. Oh, it was cool, very cool. Okay, so we need to understand, uh, just an example, right? So we need to understand that, uh, hey, what is cool? Cool is actually, what is actually meaning? It means that it's a, it's an indicator of, of temperature, right? It, uh, if, it's, if, it, if it's cool, it means that uh, it's pleasant, uh, it's not hot, Okay, you you cool down. Okay, you take a cup of coffee and then you, uh, you know, you keep it aside if it's too hot and it becomes cooler and you drink it. So, here I am asking about uh, an exam, right? How was the exam? The person said, "Oh, it's very cool." So I need to know uh, what does that cool, uh, what does that cool mean? Right? It was a it was a usage. It was a, it was a common usage. Just uh, what does that mean? Okay, you tell me. What does cool mean? If somebody answers and says, oh, it was cool. What does it mean? Anyone? <laughs> Dave also uses this word cool. Huh? Okay. So Dave, you tell me, so what does it mean if I ask you something and you say it's cool? You know, it's cool, Pastor. So, um, so what does that mean? The word cool. Anyone, actually, not just there. Anyone. Ah, okay, it was well done. 
it was uh, when uh, is in the context of exams it was fine it was more than good <laughs> okay <coughs> excuse me so yeah so much in that in those uh, letters huh? very relaxed okay um i remember an advertisement for um, sprite i think uh, the drink sprite you know um, cool drink sprite uh, which which was the whole thing was about cool right and cool being not the drink being cool but the um, the attitude being cool okay and uh, i think the character's name was fido fido dedo you know, uh, very cool just relaxed yeah very relaxed that's right so um, so that's the thing right so 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 for us to be effective in communication you know like some people might say um, hey, can uh, can i serve this food you know let's you ask and, and then they say no i'm good okay i'm good so what is the question uh, do you need some more rice or can i serve you some more biryani and the person answers no i'm good so well you didn't you didn't say you didn't ask the question whether that person is uh, you know good or bad but the person said i'm good so what does that mean that means that colloquially it means that that person saying you know i'm fine actually it's okay enough enough you know I- i'm good i'm good with this i'm good with whatever you know there on my plate i'm fine i don't want anything more no i'm good uh, do you want something to uh, you know you want a coffee or tea or you like to drink something no i'm good that means that person is saying that i'm fine i don't need anything no thanks i'm good so you know as a communicator if you are you know if we are among people who talk like that then it's it's uh, it's important that we know understand that like it's important that we you know i'm sure in your own languages of hindi or telugu or you know uh, tamil kannada you have that usage right so you need to understand that okay it's not that you don't need to know the grammar and everything but this would this would help us to communicate better okay it's not like it's a bad word or anything i'm not uh, advocating that but to know the common usage so uh, language very important we understand that and we speak speak it etc right okay um so um also know that there are formal communications and informal communications you know formal communications uh, the way you would address a meeting uh, you know a formal meeting maybe it's a business meeting maybe it's a you know meeting of leaders maybe it's a meeting of staff you know the, depending on the setting the language differs right you don't uh, uh, you know you don't go into a business meeting and you don't know the people and uh, you, you don't say uh, you know uh, uh, you know hi everyone or you know you there is a certain formality okay um or uh, you know if it's a informal setting if it's a if it's just some friends and there's no need to be formal and say okay uh, i'm very glad to be here this uh, evening uh, with among you as friends and uh, you know there's no need to be like that and everybody's going to um think hey, what's what's strange this is strange what is weird uh, this is weird right this person's talking like this right so but we need to understand there is formal there is informal and uh, accordingly you know uh, addressing in that uh, tone or in that way will help a uh, communication right it, it helps um the message to be received uh received well right uh, there are no barriers to communication right okay so let's look at um, the next one which is non verbal communication okay so when you say verbal when we say communication uh, what we are saying is okay the words that we speak the language that we use uh, and things like this like the slangs that we use or the uh, the phrases the metaphors that we use in order to speak but also there are uh, in communication there is this non verbal communication which forms part and parcel of the message whether you like it or not okay so for example okay suppose you ask me a question uh so how are you doing pastor okay and i'm answering there are two ways i i'm okay i'm going to answer okay response number 1 i'm great okay you got that you ask me the question how are you and i'm answer and i'm answering oh i'm great i'm doing great and the same question you know how are you doing pastor and i'm saying oh great okay first i answered great great 
secondly i'm answering great okay now same words right i'm doing great oh, i'm doing great so what do you make of that of these two response let's look at response one let's look at response two what do you make of that first response or uh, you know what did you understand from that first response anyone Kiran first response to my quest uh, you know to your question let's say you ask the question how are you and i responded that way okay so based on that first answer what do you understand mm strange what was strange the first response or the second one my first answer or the second one first one okay so i'm saying you know you're asking me uh how i am and i answered i'm great i'm doing great so so okay so is that strange okay because the answer was yeah there was excitement i said i'm doing great how did you know because i'm just you know i'm waving my hands okay that's one thing gesture okay um okay let me, for for one second you know uh, just understand that the words were the same right okay so um, body language yes there was excitement there was a uh, body language i i waved my hand okay uh, i waved i gestured with my hand and uh, what else did you notice how was my tone tone of my voice means right it sounded there was there was a lot of energy right i sounded excited and i and i'm saying oh great right and the second one the words were the same oh great or i'm doing great but the body language was you know i i just put down my shoulder droop my shoulders and uh, my, my you know my eyes were i didn't even look at the camera i was just looking down and I'm, oh great okay the tone was down there was no energy it sounded tired okay so the importance of knowing non verbal communication understanding non verbal communication because if i you know some of us we understand it you know right from like especially babies and children you know the tone from the tone you know that mother is not uh mother is upset okay from the way they call you okay they call jay kumar you know i remember then oh something is wrong why they just calling my name it's the tone right from the tone i know that something is off okay so the tone the gestures the body language okay uh, it conveys something something added to the words right so that is also communicating you know that's communicating either the person is interested not interested person is uh, you know uh, fear uh, afraid uh, all those things so in communication in in order to be effective communicators we need to learn this thing or we need to understand that there is something called non verbal communication right uh, uh, is the person so as a listener especially we need to uh, we're going to look at you know another section another um, category called listening so you know as a listener i need to know uh, well people are saying something but then what are they actually really saying right uh they are saying those right words but the expression is not matching with the words right now when you're doing something online it makes makes it even more difficult right it's uh, so that's a challenge like right, to communicate online where um, you can't necessarily see the people like right, you're communicating with right okay so uh, non verbal communication very very important for us to know uh, um but you can use non verbal communication in order to uh, reiterate or reinforce the word you're speaking okay so when you 
when we uh, because of our posture, you know, we, when we lean forward to say something, or when we gesture to say something, um, and uh, the tone, you know, when we when we are excited about the message that we are actually sharing, it creates a very positive um, environment, and the and the messages goes out forceful. Okay, than before. Okay, so people are responding to the uh, message, what is being communicated. So as a communicator, as one who is speaking or presenting something, uh, I, I can be aware of all this. Okay. Um, see, we, we did the class on biblical preaching, right? Homiletics. Uh, was it last semester or before that? Um, maybe before that, right? So you, uh, you know, or oh, last year, sorry. Um, so each of you, you know, you recorded the messages, you put it online, and then there was a lot of feedback, right? We 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 we, we shared that. So that's the thing, you know. Um, in one of the some of the things, uh, it could have been even more animated, right? Uh, I, I I remember sharing this feedback. You know, look at the camera when you when you're speaking because um, some of you were. You're looking at your notes only, uh, and uh, you're not looking into the camera when you were speaking. So you remember, you know, we looked at all that. So, um, so all that helps in order to communicate the message well. So just remember that. Okay. So um, uh, when you're, you know, what we need to understand is that our facial expression, our tone of voice, and our body language uh, tells people how we are feeling emotionally. Okay. And the words also convey it. But all this, it is also speaking something, communicating something. Okay. Um, so this nonverbal communication, it helps to reinforce relationship with people. Okay. Um, now, they, um, let's say you, you realize that, uh, you know, somebody is uh, saying something, but then they are being very defensive. Okay. Somebody is saying something, but you realize that um, this, the words all sound great, but you realize that uh, they are being guarded. Okay, then we can actually do something in order to improve that, right? improve that, or let people loosen up. You know, you you see that people are all very very tensed up. You know, they're all sitting very stiff, and you're speaking to them. You're addressing them. You, know, you can actually help people relax a little more. Um, just find out why they are doing that, right? And then you can you can actually draw people out uh, from their stiffness, and um, you know. So so you can do that as a person, right? So which we which we need which, which means that we need to understand. You know, are people stiff? Are people uh, you know? Um, yeah. uh, why are they like that, right? Um, and I asked them a question, and they answered, but still I feel that. They, you know, based on their answer, based on the tone of their voice, uh, they are angry with me. Uh, I can find out and uh, it dispel that anger, right? So it helps us to reinforce our uh, relationship and set right our relationship. Okay. Um, verbal, uh, non-verbal communication also gives us feedback. Okay. Like I remember one place where I was, uh, um, it was a long many years ago, just sharing the. Uh, sharing the message and uh, the fact is that normally you know you look at people and then you share and then you say amen and then they would also say amen or praise the lord and uh, they were also um, you know maybe nod their head right you're looking for all that you know isn't it and then they say yeah they agree with it um, and sometimes it's difficult you know when people don't do that right? so uh, i remember speaking at this place and then um, I would look at the look at them and say something, and they would turn their eyes away. Okay, so I, I had a tough time finding out why why were they doing it. Okay, um, uh, and I'm I'm trying to do my best, you know, to, to communicate, and uh, uh, I'm thinking, you know, what am I doing wrong? Right, I'm I'm sharing, and and they are turning their eyes away. They're looking at, uh, away, and uh, this particular audience. So then I realized that that the culture of that particular group. You know that particular ethnicity is that that they for them to look at the eyes of a person who's a elder or a spiritual leader is a sign of disrespect. Okay, so 
I was trying my best to look into them, to look into their eyes and share and speak, you know, so that I can connect. Uh, I can, I can, I can tell them I, I, so that I can, you know, that's my natural, natural thing, right? You look at them and you speak, but they were turning their eyes because in their culture to look at a leader uh, or a spiritual leader or an elder uh, and directly as a sign of disrespect. So, you know, you see the difference, subtle difference. It was conveying something, right? They were conveying something. Uh, they were actually conveying respect. But for me, it was a disconnect. Okay. So, uh, the, you know, at a regular audience, are, the, are people watching? Are people nodding their heads? Are people, or are they having a blank expression on their face? All this is communicating something to us. So, we can make those changes. We can make those adjustments. Right? We either... We can slow down or we need to maybe speak a little faster because people are feeling a little sleepy. And, uh, you know, because of that, they are, um, you know, they got that blank expression on their face and so on. So, um, so these are the things. Okay. And also, um, uh, you, you know, uh, so yeah, regulating the flow of communication means that, uh, so we can tell people that, okay, just by saying, by looking at them and, uh, you know, with our facial expression or with our nod or something, uh, which is, again, cultural, we, we, we kind of convey that we are, we are done with the message and, and several things, right? So, um, so we learn that. Okay. And, and the thing is that with a global audience or maybe God takes you to a particular setting, uh, we need to understand what is, what is permissible, what is not. Okay. Now, when you point fingers, you know, in some cultures, it's at a person as an elder, it's considered disrespectful. Okay, so we need to understand that. Okay? So and not really, you know, point fingers at a person, right? and things like that, simple things like that, we need to understand, because then uh, communication will be effective, they will not be offended. Okay, they will not think that what is this person is not you know, doesn't have manners, he's, he's doing all this, right? Okay, so, um, so in conclusion, okay, so we see that, yes, communication can be verbal, communication is nonverbal, it's understand, it's important to understand the nonverbal things, and make it part of our communication process, okay? So, so this week, uh, you know, when we, uh, till we come back to our next class, just try it out, Okay, just uh, try it out um, in your communication. See how it can improve um, when you add non-verbal uh, communication. Okay. And you, saw, you see how it can break down things if your non-verbal cues are not there. Okay. Or you know, your tone, the tone of your voice, if it's different, you see what the response is. Okay, just try it out and we will talk about it. So next next class, we're going to talk about listening skills. It's very, very important again. Okay. Okay. So we will we will stop right here. You have a good day and God bless you guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Right. See you. Bye-bye.